November 27, 2025. The United Nations activates the largest planetary defense exercise in history. Hours earlier, US Space Command rewrote its doctrine to prepare for new phenomena. NASA retasks over 20 assets. The European Space Agency approves 22 billion euros overnight. Official explanation, just a comet, no threat. Yet every alarm bell is ringing at once. If 3i Atlas is routine, why mobilize global defenses? The cover story does not match the action. The deeper you look, the more the questions stack up. General Chance Saltzman stands before a bank of microphones, his words measured. The Space Force must be prepared to adapt to new phenomena that change the character of the domain. That phrase, new phenomena, lands just days before the United Nations triggers a planetary defense exercise spanning dozens of countries. The official paperwork calls it a comet tracking drill. The timing says otherwise. Inside the European Space Agency's headquarters, budget lines are redrawn. On November 25, 2025, ministers sign off on 22.1 billion euros for the coming year. Publicly, the money is for science, exploration, and planetary defense. Privately senior officials describe the Mars observations as a rehearsal, not a simulation, a real-world test. ESA's own release calls it a valuable exercise for planetary defense. The object? 3i Atlas. The language? Cautious, almost clinical. The scale? Unprecedented for a so-called non-threat. NASA quietly retasks a fleet of spacecraft. Hubble, Webb, Mars orbiters, even heliophysics missions. Each gets a new target, one object, one name. No press release lists all the assets. No single document spells out the full scope. But observation logs and mission updates show a sudden pivot. According to internal estimates from mission planners, more than 20 instruments are redirected. Officially, it is for science. Unofficially, the coordination is hard to miss. The International Asteroid Warning Network, operating under the UN Planetary Defense Framework, launches a global astrometry campaign. The stated aim is to practice early warning, cross-agency communication, and data sharing. The campaign materials stress that 3i Atlas poses no threat. Yet the volume of data, the number of participating observatories, and the speed of the response are all out of proportion to a routine exercise. Documents describe this as a unique opportunity, a phrase that appears in nearly every agency summary. Behind closed doors, planners debate the language of risk. No one calls it an emergency. No one says the word threat. But the actions speak louder. Mars orbiters are repointed, ground-based telescopes are granted emergency time, and budget approvals move at record speed. The choreography is tight, almost rehearsed. Every move leaves a paper trail. Every communique hedges, just enough to keep options open. Saltzman's doctrine, the UN drill, ESA's budget all land within a two-week window. The object of attention is 3i Atlas. The official stance is calm. The operational tempo is anything but. When doctrine, funding and global drills converge around a single comet, the question isn't if something is happening. The question is, why? And why now? July 1, 2025. An early morning scan from the Atlas telescope in Chile flags a new object. The data shows a hyperbolic path, interstellar, not bound to the sun. The speed stands out immediately, 58 kilometers per second. Fastest on record for any natural visitor from beyond the solar system. The Atlas survey team, used to cataloging routine near-Earth asteroids, runs the numbers twice. Then a third time. No error. The minor planet center issues a circular from the International Astronomical Union by midday. The object gets its official designation, 3i Atlas. The 3i designation means it is only the third confirmed interstellar object ever observed, after Oumuamua and Borisov. Within days, observatories across the globe adjust their schedules. Palomar, Gemini South, Apache Point. Each log's follow-up sessions. Early spectra show a red slope, little gas activity at four astronomical units. No classic cometary emissions. 
By mid-July, the first orbit calculations predict a close approach to Mars. The date, October the 3rd, 2025. Closest point, 29 million kilometers. For context, that is less than a fifth of the distance from Earth to the Sun. ESA's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter pivots, repointing its sensors to catch the flyby. Mars Express follows suit. That week, ground-based telescopes in both hemispheres scramble to get time on target. The Near-Earth Object Confirmation page of the International Astronomical Union fills with new astrometry from amateur and professional astronomers alike. October 29th and 30th, 2025. Perihelion. 3. I, Atlas passes behind the Sun from Earth's perspective. For nearly 48 hours, it is hidden from direct view. Solar observatories and heliophysics missions keep watch for indirect signals. Reports start to circulate among mission teams about subtle changes in trajectory, non-gravitational acceleration, not fully explained by outgassing alone. The object's coma brightens. Jets of material extend out in straight lines visible for over 1 million kilometers. November 19th, 2025. NASA holds a rare live briefing, summarizing early findings. The official line, nothing out of the ordinary. Yet the observation campaign intensifies. Hubble and Webb schedule overlapping windows. Mars assets prepare for another round of imaging. The International Asteroid Warning Network publishes an updated campaign timeline emphasizing the need for precise tracking as 3i Atlas nears its closest approach to Earth. December 19, 2025. The object's closest point to our planet, 270 million kilometers. Still far by any threat standard, but well within range for detailed study. Every major telescope with the right alignment is watching. Spectroscopy, photometry, high-resolution imaging. Data pours in from across the globe. Analysts note that the window for direct observation will not last long. By January, 3i Atlas will be outbound, heading for Jupiter's orbit. March 2026, the final major milestone. The Juno spacecraft, already in orbit around Jupiter, is tasked to listen for radio signals and monitor for any objects released near the giant planet's hill sphere. The planned flyby is precise, matching the boundary where objects can be captured by Jupiter's gravity. Teams prepare for one last chance to catch anything unusual, before 3 I Atlas disappears into the dark between worlds. Each date, each maneuver, is logged and time-stamped. Not just a comet drifting through the solar system, but an object shadowed by the world's most advanced sensors at every step. The timeline is clear. The reasons for the attention are not. Spectrographs at the Very Large Telescope flicker to life as 3i Atlas enters range. The first spectra come in redder than expected, unusual but not unheard of. Then the chemical fingerprints start to stack up. Nickel lines, strong and persistent, crowd the chart. Iron, usually a constant companion in comet spectra, barely registers. The Very Large Telescope team double-checks calibration, then runs a control with a standard comet. Iron shows up there, as it should. For 3i Atlas it is missing. The lead investigator calls the result extreme, the kind of anomaly that demands a second look. Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope zeroes in on the coma, its instruments break down the volatile mix. Carbon dioxide dominates, with water trailing far behind. By late November, the ratio is clear. Carbon dioxide outweighs water by at least 8 to 1. That is a reversal of the usual script. Most comets in our system are water-rich, with carbon dioxide a minor player. Here, the roles are flipped. The web team calls it one of the highest carbon dioxide to water ratios ever measured. Other signatures are missing too. No strong C2 or C3 lines. Standard traces for cometary chemistry are gone. Palomar and Gemini South report similar patterns. The Apache Point team, looking for the telltale green of diatomic carbon, finds nothing but a deepening red slope. Volatile modeling points to a cold, carbon-rich origin. 
Some suggest formation far from any star, where carbon dioxide could freeze out in bulk and water remains locked away. Others wonder if the object has been processed by cosmic rays or heated during its journey, stripping away outer layers and leaving behind this odd mix. No one has a complete answer. Theories multiply, but the data keep returning to the same puzzle. Nickel without iron, carbon dioxide without water, a spectrum that refuses to play by the rules. As the observing campaign intensifies, teams share raw spectra and reduction pipelines in real time. Every new dataset confirms the outlier status. The chemical profile is not just rare, it is almost unique. For planetary scientists, the question shifts from what is it to how did it get here? How did it get here? A comet's tail is supposed to follow the rules. Dust and gas, pushed by sunlight and the solar wind, stream away from the nucleus in broad, spiraling arcs. But 3I Atlas refuses to play along. The anti-tail, a sharp blade of dust pointing straight at the sun, holds its shape for weeks. Not a faint illusion, but a geometrically clean line, tracked from multiple observatories across shifting angles. Kinematic dust models try to explain it, grains ejected in the anti-solar direction, caught in a dance of orbital mechanics and light pressure. Yet the structure does not break down, even as the viewing geometry changes. Standard models account for brief anti-tail appearances, not months of stubborn persistence. Why does the anti-tail persist? October 31st brings another puzzle. David Farnoccia, a dynamicist at JPL, publishes a report on the motion of 3I Atlas. The object is accelerating in ways gravity alone cannot explain. The numbers are small, but unmistakable. To match the observed trajectory, the comet would need to shed more than 10% of its mass, an enormous amount for a body that appears intact in every image. Outgassing is the default explanation, but outgassing leaves fingerprints, jets that spiral, tails that fan out, a slow drift as material escapes. Here, the jets shoot out in ruler straight lines, extending over one million kilometers, refusing to curve with the object's rotation. The rotation period is 16.16 hours. Material should twist, spiral, blur. Instead, the jets remain fixed, as if anchored by something more precise than gas venting from a tumbling rock. Jet modelers run simulations. They tweak the rotation period, adjust ejection speeds, change dust grain sizes. Some scenarios come close. None reproduce the combination of razor-straight jets, the persistent anti-tail, and the non-gravitational acceleration all at once. The mechanical puzzles pile up. Each one has a natural explanation on paper. But together, the odds stack against coincidence. Scientists like Farnoccia document the anomalies, careful not to speculate. The data is clear. Something about 3i atlas motion and structure does not fit the script. Is nature playing a trick, or are our models missing a key piece? NASA's official line never wavers. Nikki Fox, head of science, repeats it at every opportunity. No techno signatures, nothing that would lead us to believe it's anything other than a comet. Amit Kshatriya, director of exploration, echoes the message. This object is a comet. It looks and behaves like a comet. The public briefings are calm, measured, almost routine. Yet behind the scenes, the scale of the operation tells a different story. Observation logs show a surge in activity. Hubble and Webb both get new time allocations. Mars orbiters, heliophysics missions, ground-based telescopes, each one adds 3i Atlas to its target list. According to mission planners, the total count climbs past 20 instruments, though NASA never publishes a full roster. Internal schedules fill up with overlapping observation windows. The coordination is tight. Resources usually reserved for rare planetary events or threat monitoring are now focused on a single object. High rise, the high-resolution camera on Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is scheduled to capture images during the October flyby. But the data doesn't appear for weeks. No official explanation. Some say it's just the normal processing lag. Others notice the silence. For an object that poses no threat, 
the response looks anything but routine. NASA insists the campaign is about science. The scale, the urgency, the delays, they're left unaddressed. The credibility gap widens. When the words say routine and the actions say priority, trust becomes a question. If nothing is wrong, why does it look like everyone is preparing for something they won't name? Avi Loeb sits in his Harvard office, surrounded by data charts and orbital diagrams. He does not claim 3i Atlas is artificial. He does insist the anomalies deserve real scrutiny. Loeb rates the object 4 out of 10 on his own scale, level 4, an anomaly meeting some techno-signature criteria, but not enough to claim engineered origin. His approach is simple. If something looks engineered, test that idea with predictions. If it is natural, the evidence should rule in its favor. He points to the anti-tail, razor straight, persistent, geometrically clean. Loeb proposes a swarm hypothesis. What if the anti-tail is a line of compact objects traveling together, lagging behind due to subtle differences in acceleration? He sketches the engine hypothesis. The observed non-gravitational acceleration could be a signature of internal propulsion. The blue tinge might fit with a hot engine or even artificial lighting. Both ideas are testable. If the object changes course near Jupiter's Hill sphere, or if radio signals are detected by Juno in March, those results would be hard to square with a standard comet. Loeb runs the numbers. The odds of every anomaly stacking up by chance, he estimates, are about 1 in 100 million. Not impossible, but not something to wave away either. He is clear. Most likely it is a comet. But when nature throws a curveball, the responsible move is to check for a picture on the mound. Who will look? Jason Wright, an astronomer at Penn State, cuts through the noise with a simple warning. None of these are evidence it's a spacecraft. He points to the classic duck test, coma, tail, jets, outgassing. All standard comet behavior, even if the details are odd. His main argument is statistical. With only three interstellar objects ever observed, any pattern looks strange. Sample size is everything, he says. You can't build probabilities after the fact and call it proof. For Wright and most of the mainstream, the anomalies stack up, but not in a way that demands an engineered explanation. Anti-tails, non-gravitational accelerations, even unusual chemistry, all have natural precedents, even if they are rare. The European Space Agency plans to release new data from the JUICE mission in February 2026. That window matters. It is the next chance for outsiders to check the numbers and see if the story changes. Until then, the scientific process grinds forward, slow and public. What remains murky is the decision chain. Who decides which data gets fast-tracked, which stays locked up, and why? As December 19th approaches, the only certainty is that more eyes than ever are watching, not just the comet, the institutions tracking it. Right now, the most advanced space assets on Earth are tracking an object officials call harmless. Yet global defense infrastructure moves as if the stakes are far higher. When response outpaces explanation, the real story is not what they say, it is what they do. In the end, unanswered questions are not a sign of paranoia. They are the reason we keep watching. What do you see that does not ADD up?